Father, thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind, none of me, all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Mark chapter 5 and verse 36. Um, pretty, pretty big deal, this teaching this morning. Uh, kind of started from Bible study this Wednesday. How many of you were at Bible study Wednesday night? We, we, it was, it was, it was, uh, uh, a life check, right? Um, so I wanted to develop this this morning and, and do a series on this. Um, Mark chapter 5 and verse 36. He says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. In every situation in our lives, you're, you're, you're going to either be in fear or you're going to believe. And, and when you're not believing, you're being afraid. And the number one fear for Christian people is the fear that what God promised in his word won't work. I'm afraid that this thing that I'm standing on might not work. And there is a, an attack, especially on Christians, where your believing is concerned. And we've got to make sure that we are not believers who are no longer believing. That was mostly understood for people who were not born again, that obviously they don't believe because they hadn't made Jesus the Lord of their life. And that's true. Until I, get, I begin to look at just believers and wondering if we are believing. So I want to start off with this issue of condemnation because it keeps creep, creeping up. We've done a, a, a series on condemnation, but it, 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 it seems like it is going to be the result of you not believing. A, a person that's not born again is already in condemnation because they didn't believe to make Jesus the Lord of their life. And so let's look at this carefully. Let's define it. Condemnation, and then I'm going to show you, you know, some ways to figure out if you are walking in condemnation still. Condemnation means to pronounce unfit. It means guilty. Unusable, unusable. Ever felt like you were unusable? It involves judgment. Condemnation involves punishment. It, it, in, it involves disapproval. If I had to take a couple of words to define condemn, condemnation, it would be the feeling that you're not enough. The feelings that you're not enough. You know, when you condemn a building, it's no longer usable. It's been judged. It's not up to par to be able to do what it's supposed to do. And there are lots of people that feel like that. They feel like they're just not enough. I just am not enough to uh, do this or to accomplish this or to walk like this. It's almost like you're stuck in inferiority. Inferiority and condemnation goes hand in hand. A man who is inferior is this same guy who just they don't feel like they measure up. An inferior person feels like they just can't measure up, and so they have to become superior to cover up their inferiority complex. To be inferior means to fall short. I'm not enough. It falls short. And, and let me give you an example. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, in the King James and then the TPT, Let's look at it in the King James verse. He says, for all have sinned 
and then what's the, what's the result of all have sinned? And come short. Coming short is inferiority. All have sinned and come short. Coming short is that condemnation. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, so it, when Adam did what he did and, and caused this curse to go everywhere, it affected everybody in inferiority. And the only antidote for inferiority is, is believe in Jesus. Look at this in the Passion Translation. He says, for we all have sinned and are in need of the glory of God. We all have sinned and we are in need of the glory of God. The reason why this issue of condemnation keeps coming up, ladies and gentlemen, is because it is the root of a lot of things. Condemnation will lead to fear. So we, we, we have to examine this. Condemnation leads to fear. The Bible says God hadn't given us the spirit of fear, but please understand something, that fear that is tolerated is faith that is contaminated. What are you afraid of? Sometimes when you go off and you cut somebody out and you start fussing and stuff like that, you, it, it may not be, a, it's, it's not ultimately, a, it's not really an anger problem more than it is a fear problem. Your anger is an expression of what you are afraid of. I'm afraid of something, so my anger is expressing that fear. Job said, the thing I fear the most has come upon me. Fear operates like faith in the, in the negative. God needs faith in order to bring his word to pass in your life. Satan needs fear in order to bring his words to pass in your life. Fear is the faith of the enemy. But please notice, fear doesn't show up without condemnation giving birth to it. Condemnation is the root issue here. When condemnation gives birth to fear, then fear is going to give birth to stress. And ladies and gentlemen, the number one killer in this world today is stress. So condemnation gives birth to fear. Fear gives birth to stress. And if you don't know how to overcome the stress, the stress now will go ahead and open the door to the ministration or the manifestation of the curse. The manifestation of the curse in your life, on your body, all started with condemnation. Do you walk around the house feeling like you don't measure up? Do you walk around the house feeling like you're not enough? Do you walk around the house feeling inferior? Do you go to school or college and you're constantly comparing yourself with somebody else like you have to compare yourself with somebody else because you have not yet come to understand how awesome you are and, and, and it's time for you to, to, to realize that you don't need to be like somebody else. You, you, you're awesome because you are authentic and God made you authentic and threw away the mold and you keep trying to give away your authenticity for a cheap copy. You're trying to be like somebody else when there's something about you. you maybe you've not discovered everything about you, but there's something about you that uh, doesn't exist with the person you're comparing yourself with. And you got to stop the self-hate. I know I'm talking to somebody here there. You got to stop the self-hate. You are awesome. You are beautiful. You are beloved. You are authentic. You are unique. And condemnation kills. It's not as simple as people they led us to be. Oh, condemnation. No. Condemnation kills, it robs. Condemnation causes the fear. The fear shows up and it causes the stress. And, 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 you're, and you're, 
there are, there are kids in high school that they, they stressed out. It's too much. Social media, you're seeing what everybody doing. Before they had social media, you couldn't see. You couldn't see. Just a few people at school, but you, you stressed out trying to do and be and act. And you've left the authentic you behind in your pursuit of trying to be like somebody else as you deny the awesome you. People who don't feel like they can measure up or people who feel like they don't measure up at all will start saying and thinking about what they need to do to measure up. When, when you are in condemnation and you feel like you don't measure up, you feel like you're not enough, your focus is you, which is not good. Your focus is all about you. You can't see nobody else but you. You start saying and thinking things like, I need to improve, so I'll, I'm going to pray more. So now your, 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 your prayer is now being motivated by your self-need to... Eh. You start thinking things like, if I, if I uh, just try harder, then the breakthrough will come. It's hard to believe when you're thinking that if you can try harder, the breakthrough will come. It's, it's all on you. If I can, can just get more faith, my miracle will come. It, again, it, it's, 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 it's all you, you, you. Ah, uh, my problem is this. So if I fix it, I'll be all right. If I can only do this, then I'll be all right. What I need to do is this. Your focus is entirely on yourself. You got to see this plan of the enemy, the plan of the enemy that he has unleashed like right now where we are today. The entire human race came under the condemnation of death by one sin, by the one sin of Adam. Now follow me very carefully here. Go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 18. Romans chapter 5 and 18. So by one man, condemnation came on all the earth. Verse 18 says, therefore, as by the offense of one judgment, by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So there was like only one law in the garden. I don't know if you realize that. One thing he asked them to do, don't eat from the fruit of this tree. That was it. He says, now all of the trees in the garden, you can have all of them, but don't eat, don't eat from this. Think about it. The real sin wasn't that they ate from the forbidden tree. The real sin is that they, they didn't eat from all of the other trees that were available to them. How many things has God made available to us and we're focused in on that one wrong thing? Are you listening to me now? This condemnation that started with Adam was intensified when the law of Moses came in. Look at Romans 5 and 20. It was intensified. It was made greater, which made condemnation greater. He said, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. That word abound means to increase. So the law entered so that offense which was condemnation, it increased. It increased because the law came in and intensified it more. And then in James chapter 2 and 10, check this out. He said, for all of you who are going to live by the law, he says, let me tell you, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in just one point, he's guilty of breaking all of the law. In other words, if you try to keep all the law and you eat pork ribs, if it's forbidden by the law, on the 4th of July, you're guilty of breaking all 613 law. Who does that? What, what the condemnation that just says, I can't do it, it's, it's not enough. I, I'm not enough. Wow. 
under the law, condemnation, is because man does not do all that the law demands and does do that which the law forbids. That's the condemnation. The condemnation is, I can't do everything that the law demands. I'm, I'm not enough. I end up doing all the things that the law forbids. I can't keep these 613 uh, laws. And every time you break one, I'm condemned. And most of those people were condemned to death. But look what happened. Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13. The condemnation that showed up because men couldn't keep the law and they broke it, basically it was based on what a man could do and what a man, what a man could do and what a man didn't do. This, this, this condemnation came on all men because of their, their actions their performance. But Jesus came, Galatians 3.13, here's the good news. Verse 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Some of y'all got it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Christ has delivered us from the curse that comes because you can't keep the law. There was a curse that came on man because he couldn't keep the law. You remember in, in verse 15, uh, Deuteronomy 28, he says, and if you will not do these things, then curse will you be here, curse will you be there. And so Christ showed up and he, he, he delivered us, redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us who had, who, who, actually the only one that could keep all of the law was Jesus. So Jesus took it upon himself to do what we couldn't do. But now listen, here's what I want you to get. When Jesus gave his life, we were delivered from the curse of the law. And in essence, we are delivered from condemnation. We're delivered from condemnation because of what Jesus did. Romans chapter 8 and 1, we're delivered from condemnation. We're delivered from condemnation. The woman who was caught in the act of adultery, Jesus gave her the, the, the gift of no condemnation because he knew he was about to die to deliver all from condemnation. Now listen to me carefully. Look at this verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. That's interesting because that was added. If you have some of your Bibles have that in italicized. What he means is there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, period. If you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation, period. Now, I want you to say this out loud. I am free from condemnation. That's not exactly the whole truth. You are free from condemnation that is caused by what you do or don't do. Under the law, you were condemned because of what you do or don't do. But is it still possible that condemnation can enter in a person's life even after what Jesus did? So there's the new condition for condemnation. There is a condition for condemnation I knew about, I don't know if I've ever taught you in relationship with the condemnation that we've been delivered from, but the new condition for condemnation is in no way related to what man does. What Jesus delivered us from was related to what men do or what, they, what man does. But the new condition of condemnation is because of the failure of man to believe and to depend upon the Son of God. Let me show you something. John chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. I'm headed somewhere. John chapter 3, 17 to 19. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Say, watch carefully. 
He that believeth on him is not condemned. Now, how many of you say, yes, Pastor Dollar, I believe and depend on him? Hey, listen, I didn't ask you to say if you're perfect. Just say, I, 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 have, I believe and I depend on him. You believe that? All right, I believe and I depend on him. So according to this scripture, you are not condemned. But, uh-oh, he that believeth not is condemned already, mainly referring to people who haven't believed enough to get born again. He says they're already condemned. People who are not born again, people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they are already in condemnation. They already feel like they're not enough. They already feel guilty. They, they, let, let me tell you something. When pe people are not born again, they feel guilty. They feel guilty. They feel, you know, like condemned. They feel like they're not enough. They got issues. They go see a therapist. He tries to talk them out of it. It does pretty good for a minute, but then you, the only way you're going to be able to get out of this condemnation is Jesus is the only way to deal with it, and, and you feel inferior, and you go and you, 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 you take some medication to try to help you not feel inferior, but you, you, there is only one. There's only one antidote for inferiority and condemnation, and that's Jesus. So he's talking about those who believe not, they're condemned already. But could it also mean the believer who for some reason no longer believes? Because I'm telling you, when you say I'm a Christian, you say I believe, and then something comes up, something happens, and for some reason you don't believe, you know what's going to come your way? Condemnation. I'm not enough. I'm not enough for God to bless. I don't have enough faith. I'm not praying enough because you're not believing, just simply believing in Jesus. Are you focused on you? Focused on what you got to do? Focus on your performance? Are, are, are you, is all the attention, all the attention given to you? And in fact, in a moment, we're going to find out if you have been walking in condemnation, even as a Christian. Jesus has delivered you from being condemned because of what you do. So even when you do something crazy, because you believe Jesus, you say, Father, I believe that you have set me free from my sins, and I believe that I have the, 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 the free gift of no condemnation, and you keep walking. But what has the devil been doing? Has that become harder to do? I don't hear, I'm not hearing the message of grace like I need to be hearing it. It's kind of hard. I messed up. And, 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 I, and, and I know Jesus has forgiven me, but some devil done got in my head making me think that he hadn't forgiven me, and I have fallen from grace back into trying to make it happen on my own. I'm a Christian, and I wake up feeling condemned. I go to church. I go to the Grace Life Conference, and I just, I don't feel like I'm worthy. Are you serious? I just don't feel like God want to, you know, he won't bless me like he blessed you. Do you see what religion is doing? It's trying to rob you of the greatest gift that heaven's ever given you, and that's Jesus, the grace and truth wrapped up in flesh. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why is this dude condemned already? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He literally says, because he will not depend on who Jesus is and what Jesus did when he was in the earth. He won't believe it. He does not, he, he, you know, to, we, we, we say all of these little words, okay? I believe, and then it just, just becomes a uh, 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 an art, uh, an art, uh, a way to articulate something. I, well, I believe, and how, how, how far does that translate? I believe. Because when you say you believe something, you, 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 you can rely on it. You know, you believe that that chair that you're sitting in right now, you believe it could support you. So you sat down. You didn't just stand at a whole service saying, I believe that it can support me. I believe it can support me. I believe it can support me. And, and, and you're not going to ever move to depend on it supporting you. 
I have to address what Christians do so much. We do this and it doesn't translate here. We are good talkers. We run our mouth and we talk and we preach and we do all of that. And in the booth in the back in the corner of the dark when no other Christians are around and you have a chance to stand on all that, all that yakking you've been doing, all that spontificating that you've been doing, and on the inside of your heart, you say it, but you just won't sit in the chair. That stunned me. I said, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do a quick check over my life. God, I need you to help me. Show me areas where I'm not believing. And I said, better than that, show me where I feel condemned. Because if I can see where I've been condemned, then I can see the fear that's there, the stress that's there, and the curse that shows up in my life. I thought this was just for saved people. But what I do is I look at myself for real. I don't have to ask five people in for a focus group. I can be honest with myself. How are you going to lie in front of God? It's like, God, show me myself. Are there areas in my life where um, I've rejected you and your promise? Have I really been keeping up with pride and ego? I know it's sitting at the table. It's sitting at all of our tables, whether you want to believe it or not, have I allowed pride and ego to take the seat, the first seat, the front seat? Because I think I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm such a Christian now, you know, I don't have to, I, I know I'm not prideful and I know I don't have ego and now you a liar. I don't have time and you don't have time to be playing church anymore. I'm trying to dig into this thing because it's our everyday living that we encounter God. It is when we wake up, we encounter God. When we go to work, we encounter God. When we're, when we're facing trials, we encounter God. When somebody bothers you and how you respond, you encounter God. When somebody lied on you, when somebody hurt you, it's all of that. It's life. It's life that's happening, and I just don't want it to happen to you. I'd rather you happen to it, but that's not going to happen until you learn how to get real with yourself and, and, and be honest with yourself. Taff and I were talking yesterday, I'm, we were talking about, it's just so unbelievable of the fables that exist among Christian people. We have so many assumed fables, stuff we just made up that ain't nowhere in the Bible. I, I can't do that, man. Life is difficult enough without a bunch of made up Christian religious fables. How you doing today? Well, I don't feel too good. You ought not say that. That ain't faith. Listen, listen, bro. I don't need you to be pointing at me talking about I ought not do that. It is faith. You ask me how I'm doing, and I'm telling you how I'm doing. Right now, I ain't doing too good. I don't feel too good, and now you done got on my nerves. That's how I'm doing right now. <laughs> but God is the one I depend on to make sure I don't stay in this situation and train me as I mature. So I'll tell you how you feel today. Oh, I don't feel too good, but if you let me finish before you interrupted me with your religious policing, I would have told you I don't feel good right now, but I'm trusting God. But you don't think you can do that because you think it's against the religion for you to, you call that doubt and unbelief. I, I, ain't, I ain't doubting them, I'm hurting. Aren't you tired of phoniness? And the body of Christ has perfected phoniness. Aren't you tired of the phoniness? Some people aren't. Some people find their security in their fable religious life. I don't. I just want to, 
I just want to live my life the way God wants me to live my life, and when it's done, it's done. I, I want to do the will of God and go. I don't want to have to go back into approval addiction. I don't want to have to go back into trying to get validated about you. I want to live my life the way God wants me to live my life, and I want to keep growing, and I want to realize that a baby doesn't grow up in three months. It, it, it takes time to grow. We're all still growing, and we're all still maturing, and we're all still learning, and that's why you're here today, to get some more so you can continue to grow, to get some more so you can continue to grow. It's like eating food. It's spiritual food, and I'm the chef, and I'm feeding you some spiritual food so I can provide some Nourishment for your emotions, nourishment for your hard times, nourishment for your bad days, nourishment so we can show you that you don't have to be condemned, to show you that you are enough. <laughs> they will roll bells down no more. <laughs> Nothing, dude. I'm excited that we can believe God. And so, the truth that condemnation is because of unbelief in the Son of God, it, he, Jesus reaffirms it in, again and again. Let, let me show, show you him saying it in, in different ways. In John chapter 8, look what he said, John 8, 24. Because of condemnation because of unbelief? Before it was condemnation because of what I did or didn't do. It, now it's condemnation because of unbelief? So what is Jesus going to do about the condemnation that comes because you don't believe? You're a free moral agent. What is he going to do because of that? Verse 24, he says, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. So imagine the guy, we're just talking about belief amongst us who believe in Jesus Christ. We don't have it all down perfect. Not a bad deal. We're going to grow into it. We're going to be all right. But think about the guy who's not born again, who doesn't believe in Jesus at all. He lives his life in condemnation. He dies in his sin. And Jesus said, I already had everything you need. I'd already forgiven you. I've already made a way for you. I've already cleansed you. I was just needing you to believe it and sign for the package so I can get you free from this condemnation. And, and, and the world's living in condemnation. Money is not the answer to condemnation. I'm telling you, I don't care how rich they are, how famous they are, I know some of these people that call me in the midnight hour and say, I'm about to kill myself and I just won two Grammys. What happened? You're already in condemnation. And he kept, he kept warning. And, and you don't think you need to still witness the people. There's so many sad people in this world who have perfected phoniness to smile in your face and look like ain't nothing wrong. Miserable. Couples getting up, looking like they all in love, about to cut each other to pieces when they get home. <laughs> I'm telling you, these United States of America, filled with phoniness and filled with mammon, where everything is done, motivated by mammon. And we're the, we're the light that ain't got time to shine. Now, now let me make sure I correct that. Jesus is the light. Amen? But he lives on the inside of us so we can release that light. You got it? And then look at this. John 12, 48. John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. Jesus said, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So he's still talking about this guy who won't receive Jesus, this guy that won't make Jesus the Lord of his life. And then John 16 and 9. So how do we fit into this? I mean, brother, brother Dahl, we're saved. We, we made Jesus the Lord of our life. We believe in Jesus. John 16 and 9. Um, Go to verse 8. Let's read through this. Verse 8 to, to 9. And when, it, when he has come, the Holy Spirit now. now. Now, here's the deal. We are living today. Hopefully, you're depending on the Holy Spirit to be your guide through life. 
you know, the Holy Spirit, somebody does something crazy to you, the Holy Spirit said, keep your mouth closed. Don't say nothing. You need to listen to him now. He's your guide. If, if you didn't need a guide, he would not have sent the Holy Ghost. So obviously you need some help. The Holy Spirit is your ezer. He's your helper. You need some help. See, that's the first thing you got to do. You got to recognize, Lord, I need some help. Come on, join me. Lord, I need some help. Now, you might not need no help right now, but you're going to need some help. You're going to need some help. Life is a path. It's a journey. You need the Holy Spirit to be with you through that journey so you don't hurt nobody. <laughs> You need some help because sometimes you need to learn the vocabulary of silence. Sometimes you talk too much. Sometimes you need the Holy Spirit to tell you, shh. Yeah, but Holy Ghost, they just talked about my mama. Don't know about talking about my mama. Shut your mouth up. The Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide you and talk to you in everyday lives, not just when it's time to give a word. The Holy Ghost just said to me, thus saith the Lord. He'll do that, but he also talks to you about, uh, don't, don't go this way this morning, go this way. Uh, 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 let, let Leroy go. I, 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 Leroy got some stuff, you, you know, you, you don't know about it. I, 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 let Leroy go. Yeah, but he got curly hair. My baby gonna have good hair. Let Leroy go. He knows something about Leroy you don't know right now. See, some of these dudes think they can play you, but when you're when you a Holy Ghost-filled woman, it's hard to be played when you got the helper on the inside of you. And, and when you don't want to hook up with a woman that's trying to use you just for her own financial benefit, the Holy Ghost will let you know she don't love you. She love this house. She love that paycheck that she saw you deposit. Let Frida go. <laughs> I apologize if your name is Frida. I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. You need some help. You're a student taking a test in college. You need some help. Holy Ghost, I know this in here, but I, I can't recall it right now. And the helpers show up and say, it's A, circle A. I don't know about you, but I don't want to deny help when I know I need help. I don't know everything. I, I don't understand everything. I need help. Hallelujah. I need help. And you shouldn't feel bad for needing help. You got a very present help. Inside information help. The Holy Ghost, I thought the Holy Ghost was just, I was scared of the Holy Ghost. All I knew about the Holy Ghost, folks get to screaming in church. You know, Y'all, some of y'all, I came from a church they used to get, they call it get to shouting. And that was when they were singing a song and somebody closed their eyes and, and they get to moving, get to moving. And then it was an explosion. Yes, sir. Bam, knock that usher that way. Yes, sir. Bam, knock that usher that way. And then they, like they in a convulsion and stuff like that. And then right after that, they say, you want the Holy Ghost? No. <laughs> no, I'm good. I thought that's all that he was going to do. You're going to talk in a weird language, spit, and, and, and have, and that's, that's all I knew. <sighs> Until I got to know him myself. And I found out that the first act of the Holy Spirit was to pour love in my heart, supernatural love to help me to love what was hard to love, what was ugly to love. Well, I, and I found out the Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide me. He wants to be my guide. He wants to be my leader. All I needed to make my mind up is to follow him. You see what I'm saying? So these religious ideas and fables, it, it, it stole some of your life from you because you were, you, were, you, were, you were relating to God based on these false fables because you didn't know it. Well, it was in the Bible. Yeah, but you didn't read it. Preacher wasn't trying to read no Bible. We're trying to make a sermon to get you to hoop and holler and give it a 10. And that's why I don't mind reading Scripture and going through Scripture. I ain't up here trying to see if you bored or not. You should have went to bed. It ain't my fault you falling asleep in church. You went to bed too late. You come to World Changes, you got to go to bed. Okay, let me get back. I'm tripping big time. Let me just. <laughs> I 
And when he has come, he will reprove, correct, the world of sin and correct righteousness and judgment. So check it out. Of sin because they believe not on me. Notice what he says. These people that are not born again, it's the reason why they don't believe on me. And I, all, I related it all to people who were, um, were, were not born again, to people who are not saved. And these thoughts kept coming up. Are there Christians that have stopped believing on him? Son, talking to me, are there areas that you stop believing on him? See, you got the Christian lingo now, but have you stopped believing him like you used to believe him? Have you stopped sitting in the chair because you don't think it can support you no more? Do you holler trust but afraid to lean on what you say you trust. I was like, God, I, oh, I, uh, I'm not trying to preach condemnation to anybody. I, and I know we live under grace, so I know this is, I just want to be a better, a better Christian. That maybe I'm examining this because I, I, I want to be a better Christian. I want to be, I want this to be real. I don't want to be in self-deception. I don't want to leave that thought I had when I was reading this and studying this and say, oh, no, I, I believe. And I know good and well there are certain areas that I say I believe, but I struggle to depend on it. And I thought that this church was mature enough for me to bring this issue up not to condemn you and beat you up because you're already heaven ready. But this is for people who say, Lord, I, I, wanna, I wanna mature more. I, I wanna get better. And I don't wanna be in deception. And I don't wanna get to a point where I'm going around, oh Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And, and, and I know on the inside that I'm not really Believing like I say. I believe God can get me a car. And then the next breath, I don't know how it's going to happen because, you know, I don't make but this much money and I don't make. That's real. Heaven and hell is not an issue we talk about right now. You did what's necessary to get there. But when you have an intimate relationship with God, how can I please you? How can I please you? Holy Spirit, show me how to walk with you better. I, I don't think I can just get satisfied with, I got born again. Now I want to know how to walk with him. I want to know how to talk to him. I want to know how to be honest with him. I want to be able to say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. I'm struggling to believe you. Help my unbelief. You remember that guy? His son was being delivered, right? The disciples couldn't cast this demon out, throwing his son in the fire. And he said, Jesus said, do you believe on me? And the man said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah, I believe, but I'm, I'm still struggling. This is my boy. I, I, I believe you. I'm just struggling that could it be done for him? See, we believe that Jesus heals. Sometimes we just don't believe he can heal me. We believe that Jesus can deliver. Sometimes we just struggle with believing, can he deliver me? And God's saying, I already know your heart. So since I already know, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. This is the relationship 
that I'm trying to move people to get in. The present message to the unsaved world is that men are condemned not because of their evil doings, but only because they reject him by whom came grace and truth. And in so doing, they place themselves outside of the operation of God's grace. There's nothing he can do for an unsaved man out there that won't trust him and believe him. But the message to the saved world is just believe, don't perform. <laughs> Just believe, don't perform. Holy living is still the objective of grace, but you have to believe right in order to live right. Your living right starts with you believing right. So, Pastor Dahl, I hear what you're saying, but are, how do I know if I'm living in condemnation and not, not believing the Word? Number one, Philippians 3.13 in the N-A- SB, if you could, New American Standard Bible. Number one, how do I know if I'm living in condemnation? You think about the past a lot. You think about the past a lot. And when you think about the past a lot, you're nourishing, re you're, you're, you're nur you're nourishing regret. The scripture says, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. Even Paul said it, I, I, I ain't got it all yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I wonder how many of you are still living in your past. I wonder how many of you are stuck and chained to the mistakes of your past. And you can hardly go forward because every time you go forward, your past, like a chain, pulls you back. And the root of that is condemnation. I don't feel like I'm enough to go forward. And with Jesus, you are. He is your deliverance from condemnation. Number two, there's another sign of living in condemnation. You struggle trying to forgive yourself. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in NLT. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in NLT. You struggle trying to forgive yourself. Are you still struggling to try to forgive yourself of something that happened 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10, yesterday? The Bible says in verse 17, he says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Huh. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. Yeah, it was wrong. Yeah, it was messed up. But you got to stop the struggle trying to forgive yourself. You got to go in the mirror one day and you got to look at yourself in the mirror and it's real interesting when you see your reflection looking right back at you and you got to say out loud, I forgive myself. And you know what the devil's going to do? You'll be free from condemnation, but he will surround you with people that will constantly try to remind you and try to condemn you for what you did in your past because the world has the idea is change first and then we won't condemn you. But Jesus says, I won't condemn you, and then you can go ahead and change. You got to let it go. You know what you're saying when you won't let go of your past sins? You know what you're saying? I don't believe Jesus has forgiven me. It feels weird, I know, but it's like Jesus has forgiven me, and I receive that forgiveness and I forgive myself, and I'm finna go forward. And whoever else can't do that, that's between them and God. I got to keep it moving. I got to keep it moving. Number three, 
is the third sign that you're in condemnation. You have a judgmental and critical spirit. Look at Matthew 7 and 2 in the TPT. Matthew 7 and 2 in the, in the TPT. You have a, judgment, a judgmental and critical spirit. All of that judgmental stuff and critical stuff, you know where it comes from? It comes from you doing that same thing to you. You treat people mean because you treat yourself mean. You understand that, right? You're critical of others because you're critical of yourself. It used to bother me when people were so critical of me, of my family, and especially of my wife. And then I started realizing why, and I, I started like, I didn't feel no need to get back with them. I'm like, you're online cussing me out because you, you, you just treat yourself the same way. Bless your heart, I'm going to pray for you because you need it. And when you find that you are judgmental and have a critical spirit, somewhere in the mix, I still feel condemned. I still feel like I'm not enough, so I got to criticize somebody because they look like they're more than I am. And criticism and envy go hand in hand. I'm upset with you because your shoes fit you and mine don't. And then we play the blame game. And you blame the floor for you not being able to dance. <laughs> Look what he says. For you'll be judged by the same standard that you've used to judge others. The measurement you use on them will be used on you. And then finally here, the fourth sign of that you might be in condemnation is found in Romans 5 and 8 in the ESV version, Romans 5 and 8. Number four, you feel unworthy. Now, how long is that going to go before it's, it's fake? You feel unworthy. Are you, are you feeling unworthy? Are you feeling unworthy as, as a friend? Are you feeling unworthy as a Christian, feeling unworthy? Are you feeling unworthy as a woman? Are you feeling unworthy as a man? Men are interesting. They, they hurt real bad, but they have to keep the cover on because they don't want nobody to see the real them. And what they do is they end up producing a fake identity through the covers so that they won't be discovered, that I'm in pain, that I'm hurt, that I don't feel like I'm, you know, needed or wanted or I don't feel like I'm enough. But I'm not going to let you know that because masculine toxicity has taught you that you can get away with a lot of things just being aggressive and acting like it don't bother you. And then you the same dude looking down at the barrel of a gun, wondering whether or not it'd be better to pull the trigger. That's over with. In, in our men's fellowship, we don't, we don't deal with that, that stuff. We get in a circle, we confront one another, we share with one another. We're not ashamed, afraid to, to uh, be vulnerable and to say I hurt and to say I'm disappointed. We have men in those circles that shed tears and others who shed tears with them. And when we break out of that circle, we break out free. The men that are in here that attend those meetings, can I get a witness? Can you stand up and give a witness that, can you, can you get a, can I get a witness from those men who, who've been involved in those circles? who's been involved in those circles. Thank you, guys. Who refuse to live a life in rejection and condemnation and shame and guilt. We ain't doing that no more. We're worthy. Not because of what we did, but we're worthy because of what Jesus did. 
Amen. And let me close. And he all you got. And you can spend the rest of your life thinking that the other ways are going to help you out, but he all you got, bro. I looked in the mirror one day and realized and asked myself, I was like, man, Taffy, when did this happen? I used to be 20. Can I get a witness? When did, it, when did this happen? Who put flour on my beard while I was asleep? What am I saying? Dude, you need, to, you need to get busy with this because you look up one day and life's past you. And you're still trying to be this fake identity of a man. It's time for all of us to wake up and depart from the fables of religion and get know Jesus personally and for yourself. Regardless of what you hear from the pulpit, you're like, I know him. Therefore, I'll never walk in another church feeling inferior again because I have a relationship with Jesus Christ myself. I know him. And I may not understand all the principles he shares and stuff, but I know this Jesus that he's talking about. So sin is serious. Sin has consequences and sometimes uh, deadly consequences. But sin has a remedy. And in Jesus, it is finished. Shame has no place. There is no condemnation for those who trust and depend on Christ. And I'm talking about not now and not ever. All is well. You get anything out of this this morning? Every head bowed. We'll finish this part two next week. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you could please hold your walking. Thank you so much, Lord. Oh, Lord, we're so hungry for you. We're so hungry for you. We want to we wanna do it like, like you meant for it to be done. We want to live like you meant for us to live. We don't want to be fabulized in religion. Help us. I pray for every person in here right now that they know that by depending on God, whether they're saved today or not saved, by depending on God assures you that there is not ever going to be condemnation in your life, which means you'll handle the fear, you'll overcome the stress, and you'll stop the manifestations of the curse. We yield. We hold our hands up in surrender. We yield. We ask you to help us. Help us, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, help us. And if there are people here today who have yet to be born again, who have yet to declare their belief and faith in you, help them to come down this morning and get born again. If there's someone who says, I believe, but they're still looking at the chair, help them to sit down today. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Father, show us how to give. And show us how to never be afraid of giving because we believe that you care for us. The only person who ever has a problem with giving to you is the person that doesn't believe that you can take care of them. Speak to our hearts and 
speak to our souls and our minds. Holy Spirit, even lead us in our giving. And this I pray. Oh, God, something good's going to happen for this congregation today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hands. I know we do often a little different. We, we believe it's a part of our lives and we don't separate it <laughs> from the sermon. As you prepare your gifts to give and as you prepare to respond to this word, to be born again, to recommit yourself to the Lord Jesus, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to join the church, it, it, it's, it's your time now. This is a time where we use for you to respond and have the opportunity to respond. We give unto the Lord glory that's due unto his name. The Bible says bring an offering and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. It really does say that. Psalms 96. And that's what we do. We worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And we say for all of the generosity that you have given and continue to show us, we get to give to you. In Jesus' name, we get to give. Hold your offering up and join me, Father. We, we sow this out of the motivation of love. We sow this out of a cheerful heart. We don't sow this out of necessity. We don't give this out of pressure. We don't give this because we got to. We give it because we get to. And I pray that you will bless the seed that is sown and the promises that you have given to be manifested into the lives of those who see it an honor and a privilege to be able to sow into your kingdom. We praise you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive the offering. And as they're receiving the offering, I want you again to think about your response to this teaching. Will you respond to the teaching? And how will you respond to the teaching? How will I respond to what I just heard? Will I just kind of let it go through my head and say, well, you know, this is over with, so praise the Lord. Let me go and see if I can beat the traffic. Praise the Lord. <laughs> or will I say, man, this is pretty serious, and uh, I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to do what I got to do. I'm ready to rock and roll and do what I got to do. So if you're online and, and you're not born again and you want to respond, I'm going to pray a prayer in a, mo in a moment that you can respond to. But if you're here and you're not saved, come to this altar right now. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I invite you to rectify that issue right now. And secondly, if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, I invite you to come and to settle that right now. If you want the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I invite you to come and receive that right now. And last but not least, if God's calling you to join this church today, he said to Elijah, go to a certain brook and there will I sustain thee. If, if this is the certain brook, if this is the church that God's calling you to, I tell you what, Taffy and I would love to be your pastor. We would love to pastor you and to teach you and to share with you. There is one thing we cannot do, and that is we cannot make a decision for you. You are a free moral agent, and you have a right to choose. You have a right to decide. You know, sometimes I think certain things are held up in our lives because we won't make a decision. And procrastination is, is, is an enemy to victory. 
And, and when you know what you know, you need to, you need to get it done, man. You need to get it done. Amen. Praise God. 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 Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I want. Sing that next verse. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield until I die. Don't you thank God for those who come down here? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost removes every burden, destroys every yoke. Oh, my goodness. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit will move every burden and destroy every yoke and they can never be the same again. We rebuke condemnation. We rebuke fear. We rebuke shame. We rebuke guilt. And we declare that all is well because of you. In Jesus' name, those who are online, Father, I, I pray in Jesus' name that you will call them to be so tremendously blessed. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. If you'll turn this way and follow these gentlemen to the prayer room, they're going to take and minister to you.
gives you biblical understanding of how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. You'll never be the same again. At this time, you can stand for our final blessing. God bless you. It's so good to have you with us today. I pray that you have an amazing week. And remember, no regret, we're going to reset. Amen? Amen? Reset, no regret. If it shows up, you kick it out of the way. Amen? Now unto him, the Spirit of grace, the Jesus Christ that's wrapped up in grace and truth be upon all you, your house, your family, your relationships, your children, even on your jobs, that you will walk in such a tremendous blessing this week, such a tremendous authority this week, that the angels of God watch over you lest you dash your foot against the stone. May you encounter favor after favor after favor that I declare grace upon grace in your everyday life, that the wisdom of God will explode on the inside of you, that you will understand what to do when you don't know what to do. May the power of God's love come out of you. May your enemies come to know Jesus because of you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Almighty God, be glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, God bless you. Have a great day today. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I said amen. Amen. <laughs> boy, I love some world changes, boy. Yes. <laughs> Amazing service today. Uh, thank you all, of course, for tuning in today. Uh, we, I'm not even going to say I believe that you were blessed. I know that we you know, were blessed by this sure. service. For a fact. For a fact. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so um, we just want to, of course, like I said, say thank you uh, for tuning in. We want to also, of course, encourage you to share this message with someone that you love. Share it with yourself. We say it all the time. But make sure and get this word. Just have it rolling over and over on the inside of you and meditate on it meditate get yourself full mm -hmm. amen amen so uh we of course got a lot of things we'll send there tapping each other uh -huh. but i want to know what what's something you got from service today i mean first off starting off with reset reset our reset sunday that's right you know so i hope you guys really listen to that and take heed and really even if you're at home right now just like okay lord i'm gonna reset yeah. i'm not gonna live in condemnation i'm not gonna live in fear i'm not gonna allow the enemy to continue to bring my past forward yeah. today is a reset yeah. reset sunday we will no longer live bound to fear, bound to our past, bound to disbelief, bound to any of those things. It's yep. a reset. That's right. And as believers, we believe. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. That's Amen. that on that. Hey, that's Listen, it. I'm amazing service. But <laughs> we want to make sure if you did not get an opportunity to give today, we want to make sure that opportunity is extended towards you. So we do have a few different ways that you can participate. Uh, simply just text the word world changers, leave a space and add your amount and text that to 74483. Mm -hmm. You can also call in your gifts to 866-477-7683. You can mail it in to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349, or of course online at worldchangers.org or creplodollarministries.org. Okay? So we have a few announcements, just a couple. We um, got a packed April. We got a, listen. <laughs> we got a listen, packed April. A packed April. So just a few we want to get get into, um, get you to be aware of. Yes. Um, just as Dr. Dollar already mentioned, first up, of course, we have the health conference mm -hmm. coming up this Friday. This Friday. The health and wellness seminar. Um, listen, it's going to be at 7 p.m. Simply, we just want you to register. Get that information. Um, don't go just be ignorant to things that you don't know about. Like, get the answers that you need mm -hmm. concerning diabetes, concerning health, concerning your weight, concerning everything that you might not know about. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's going to be this Friday, like I said, it is a free event, so you can text the word WCCI Health, that's all one word, to 51555 to register today. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So what's next, up, next up, calling all men. Calling all men. Oh, calling my bad. I should have said that. I got, I got this. <laughs> all my fellas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So calling all men, we want to let you know, of course, the next men's fellowship is coming up on April the 20th. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Um, and we want you to know, just as Dr. Dollar said a few moments ago, uh, men's fellowship is not just a, we're going to just come and, nah, 
just kick it. No, we actually are leaving differently mm -hmm. to go and impact our families, impact our, our wives, our children, our jobs, everywhere we go, um, and knowing that you're not by yourself. Mm -hmm. So men, we want you to register. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. Text the word Men's Fellowship to 51555 to register today. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you at the next Men's Fellowship. Again, that's April 20th. It's going to be at 11 a.m. So register, register, and register. And ladies, tell your man. Tell him, like, hey, hey. Go ahead and register. You need to go on to that men's fellowship <laughs> right. on the 20th. That's right. She's going to make sure I register. <laughs> and the church said. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, so what's up next? Next up, New York, New York. We're going to be in the building on Friday, <laughs> April 26th uh, for our change experience. So come on out. We want to see y'all in the building. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've been saying for weeks and weeks, take the day off, chill, come out for the full day. If you're from the surrounding New York area, uh, Connecticut, New this Jersey, <laughs> uh, wherever, you know, anywhere in the Upper East, yeah. come on out to our change experience on Friday, April 26th. It's going to be an amazing time. That's right. Uh, if you would like to register, text CHANGE2024 to 51555 today to reserve your seat. We want to see you there. We are excited. This is our last change experience last. for the year. Yeah. So make sure you're there. Make sure. Amen. Mm -hmm. Next up, ladies. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. <laughs> All right. So, we know, we had men's fellowship. Right, we got right, women's right. fellowship. Okay. But we're not, we not going to be on campus. We're going to we can taking it off the campus. What? We taking it off the campus. We are going to Stone Mountain. Y'all Fellowship fancy. at the park, okay. honey. On Saturday, April 27th at uh -huh. 10 a.m., we invite you to choose sisterhood and embrace fellowship. That's so right. make sure and text WCCI ladies to 51555. I'm excited. It's going to be a great time. Uh, the weather is going to be amazing. We're going to walk up that mountain. If you choose not to walk up the mountain, it is perfectly fine. You can take the, the lift up uh -huh. there. We're going to have some people down at the bottom of the mountain so wherever you choose to fellowship just come on out uh, have fun with us we're gonna have a great time so make sure and be there on April 27th WCCI ladies 51555 women's fellowship be there that's right and uh, also ladies make sure to wear some comfortable shoes yes. okay yes. because you're gonna be walking yes. talking fellowshipping and all of that so comfortable shoes make sure you stretch I got right? sneakers but I might have to go shopping yeah you <laughs> <laughs> I need some new walking shoes. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, what's next, ladies? Next up, <laughs> the next weekend is our Lemon Bliss. We are so excited for Lemon Bliss on Saturday, May 4th at 11 a.m. as we honor all women who nurture and inspire because every woman deserves to be celebrated. That's right. So get your sister, get your mom, get your cousin, get your aunt, get your uh, whoever, uh, uh, play sis. Come on out to our Lemon Bliss. We are building tomorrow's legacy with general uh, generational wealth, excuse me, and learning how to manage our finances as God intended with Jay. Warshaw, co-host of the nationally acclaimed radio show, The Ramsey Show. Tickets are just $58, so that can be a gift to you, gift to your family, yeah. husbands, boyfriends, get uh, sons, get that ticket for Lemon Bliss yeah. 2024, Saturday, May 4th. You can text Lemon Bliss to 51555 to register. That's right. And brunch is included in brunch that, too. Included. So y'all going to be eating good while, while getting, getting eating, some eating. good words. All right now. All right now. So last but certainly not least, Grace Life. <laughs> Grace Life. The Grace Life Conference is here. Mm -hmm. We are just a few months away, actually, yeah. from Grace Life 2024. So this July on the 11th through the 13th, right here in College Park, Georgia. Again, we last year y'all showed out. 12,000 of you all came yes. through to College Park and packed out the dome. And it was an amazing time, yes. not only with word, revelation, uh, community. It was all of the above, and it was just an amazing time. So this year, we're going to just take it up to another level. So we want to make sure that you all get ready registered for not only the teen conference, also the children's conference, and also the Grace Life Conference. Mm -hmm. It's grace for the whole the family. The whole family. The whole family. So we want to make sure that you're here. Mm -hmm. We have a power pack lineup. Yes. Uh, 
uh, a power pack. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure and get your free ticket. It's yes. uh, free ninety nine. Free ninety nine. Free ninety nine. We're so registered. Our we girls are registered. Are registered. The so whole family. The whole is registered. family is registered. Except for the dog, but that's another story. <laughs> anyway, he gets some grace too. Yeah. But <laughs> what we want you to do is text the word grace. <clears throat> excuse me. Grace Life to 51555 or simply visit worldchanges.org. Mm -hmm. And we are so excited to see you right here in mm -hmm. College Park. All right. Now, if you missed any information from today, make sure and check out our website, worldchangers.org. That's right. Go to our YouTube channel to check out today's message and all the other messages from Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Get yeah. in that word, get honey. That word. Get that word. That was on beat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, get that word. Get that word. Well, we love you all, World Changers. Have an amazing Sunday. Get you some good food and get that good word back in the rotation and mm -hmm. get it back in your, into your spirit. So we love you all. Have an amazing Sunday. You all be blessed. And have a great week. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready to come home? Grace Life Conference 2024, the reunion is coming. Creflo and Taffy Dollar will be joined by special guests Andrea Creighton, Gregory Dickow, Bishop Clarence McClendon, Inky Johnson, Michael Smith, Hezekiah Walker, and Brian Courtney Wilson. July 11th through 13th. Don't miss this experience that includes our annual mentality and ministers and leaders conferences. Text Grace Life to 51555.